Hello, I am Dr. Cinema. I analyze and diagnose movies and explain them to you. And the topic of this Dr. Cinema diagnosis is going to be the Netflix original show, 13 Reasons Why. Now, this show is based on the book of the same name, and the general plotline is that before the beginning of the story takes place, a high school girl commits suicide and leaves 13 tapes about each person that has posture towards that decision and everything leading up to it. Now, I'm sorry it's been a while for posting a video, but I've had finals to prepare for, and on top of all that, I had to approach this diagnosis delicately because it's attracted a lot of attention. Listen to some of the facts I picked up while researching. Um, first of all, several mental health professionals were consulted during the making of the show, so that's in defense of the show. But apparently the National Association of School Psychologists was quoted saying, we don't recommend those with suicide ideation watch the series. The show has been accused of idealizing uh, suicide, but that's, uh, that's a whole issue that I really don't want to get into. Here are some more facts. St. Vincent Elementary School in Edmonton prohibited talk of the show on school grounds. Ham Hamilton Wentworth District School Board in Canada said it was guilty of glamorization of suicidal behavior and depicting negative portrayals of helping professionals. That's sort of another topic we'll touch on later on in this diagnosis. And all right, Dr. Harold something weird, who is the president of the Child Mind Institute, is actually telling Netflix that they should pull the show because he's, he said that about 30 years ago, studies were done after four TV programs about teen suicide air on the TV and then Two weeks later, they somehow managed to determine that a definite increase in attempts and completions of suicide took place. Now, this is a very sensitive topic, and this is a complicated show. I wasn't sure which angle to take this on. So, I decided to look at what is probably the real main character of the show, Hannah Baker, even though she wasn't technically alive during the main timeline of the show, there are still plenty and plenty of flashbacks to when she was alive. And I'm here to ask the question, like, as tragic as her suicide was and how complicated this issue is, was she really a good person that a lot of people were sort of building her up as and such, and what was the real truth about Hannah Baker's character? Well, there are several things we should talk about. First of all, let's talk about the no note with the parents. I mean, yeah, she left behind tapes for people that she that she said caused her to take suicide, but there was no note at all for anyone in public, like not for her parents or anything, and they were like devastated. That's sort of a selfish move on her part, like not leaving a note for her parents, not even to tell her that it was not their fault. Now, spoiler alert, Tony does eventually reveal the tapes to their parents, but she did not want her parents to even hear about these tapes. I mean, if you were to even talk to your parents, or at least let them know it wasn't their fault, like something good could have come out, something more positive. But, I'm not quite sure what the thinking was there. But another issue is sort of like, Courtney, she's not everyone's favorite character on the show, obviously, but, but Hannah did sort of out Courtney out as being gay. I mean, Courtney did sort of spread a rumor that Hannah was gay, but as bad as that was, it probably wasn't worse than Hannah Baker, like, saying Courtney was in the closet because she was actually in the closet. I mean, that's sort of a really bad, another selfish move on 
her part as well. And let's talk about the whole Jessica party situation. Hannah could have done so much more. She could have, like, actually gone to the police or, like, done something, like, stay with Jessica after the whole thing happened to make sure no one else tried to walk into the room, but she sort of just left, and she wasn't really a good friend at all. Like, this was a time of need, and she didn't really do anything. She could have at least left a note privately for Jessica to let her know what happened, but she didn't do that at all. And as bad as her life, the school and social was, she still had a nice home. There's no abuse. Hell, her, her parents got her a new car for homecoming, or I think it was homecoming or something like that. So she could have, like, still, like, had a good relationship with her parents, like, talk things out with them and sort of, like, alleviate all the negative and bad stuff, but no, she just kept it all to herself. Like, really? And she also judges a lot of people. And even though people judge her a lot as well, but she really just judges people. Like, with Zach, she pretty much, like, like calls him, like, pretty much breaks his ego. And Zach was just trying to be her friend, too. I mean, sure, he was stealing, like, her compliment, her compliments, which was a bad move. But she could have talked about talk to Zach, like, actually try and make an effort to make friends with people that obviously need friends, because she even said on the tape that she wondered if Zach has any real friends to talk to. I mean, really? You, first you're judging him, then you're, like, thinking about it? Where is that when you're thinking about Justin, about his poor life, and with sharing, like, the issues they had to go through under the surface at school? Why? Do you not take that into effect? And, of course, there was the issue with Tyler, and even though he did do a pretty stalker thing, was stalking, like, she, again, she could have talked to him, I mean, he obviously didn't have friends, why didn't she just talk to him and, like, try to understand, she just basically did the same thing to him that a lot of people were doing to her, like, really? And, of course, the whole thing with the tape is that she's unreliable narrator. I mean, on one of the first tapes, she says that first Alex and then Jessica stopped coming up to the little get-together at the FML club. But apparently Jessica said that Hannah was the first one to stop coming to the club. So that right there is a little bit of a issue. But then later on, when we get to Zach's tape, there was an incident where she said, like, he crumbled up a note that Hannah gave to him and threw it on the ground in the hallway. But we find out that Zach didn't do that. He actually had it, like, in his wallet. And he actually reads it on a consistent basis. So, that's a really big thing to be inaccurate about. I mean, what's going on there? And, of course, there's the rip and tapes themselves. I mean, she's... Blaming other people for the action that she's taken, but she took the time to make these tapes to go through each incident in her head over and over again. And she didn't stop to think like she could do this a certain way or that a certain way and that kind of stuff. I mean, the whole tape just had a big ripple effect on everyone involved. It caused Alex to commit his own suicide, it pushed Tyler to plan. To plan was assumingly a school shooting that could be a topic in the next season. It caused Clay to have hallucinations and freak out. Now it even caused like even caused Justin to be a little irrational, freak out, get paranoid. Did Hannah know that would happen? If she did, would she still have made the tapes? I mean. I just don't understand a lot of the thinking, especially with the TV's version of how things all turned out. But of course, I still have to ask the question. Is Hannah Baker still like a decent, kind, decent person? It's complicated. I mean, this is high school. There are a lot of emotions and issues involved, and 
I'm not a girl, so I can't really tell what the added emotions and feelings are there. But we also have, like, the school counselor who seemingly doesn't really help. I mean, Hannah gets raped, and she, and without, like, really naming names or actually saying anything explicit, she tries to go to the school counselor to try to figure out ways and how she would go about this. And he more or less, like, sort of tells her to just move on if she doesn't want to confront him or anything. I mean, there's a lot of people other than Hanbeg that's done some pretty terrible stuff, and ma that makes them bad people, or at least makes them seem like bad people. But I can't really say if whether or not Hannah Baker is a decent person, or if she really just isn't. I mean, this is a very complicated issue. Hopefully, later on. We'll do something that can help us narrow it down whether or not she was good or not. But I guess I'm going to let the, this one be open. It's really a personal choice. Nothing? You're not going to say anything? You've said something pretty much every other time we do this, so nothing now? Even Quachi doesn't seem to have a sarcastic opinion or anything. But... I still think you should watch the show. It brings up a lot of issues and points. And uh, obviously if you like suicidal ideation and tendencies, then you probably shouldn't. But I'm not going to tell you what to do. Just make sure that you don't do anything that could cause harm to you or other people. This is a very complicated thing. I guess I'm just gonna have to leave it like this, even though it doesn't really tie up anything. But as Dr. Cinema as I am, hopefully I can do something better on the next episode. Like, comment, subscribe, share. See you next time.